Feasting Table. Item number SCP-1117. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1117-1 is to be stored in a standard secured vault at site blank. Under no circumstances are personnel to be permitted to enter the chamber or interact with the object. Cases of SCP-1117-3 produced by accidental exposure or testing are to be placed into isolation with minimal contact. Description SCP-1117-1 is a wooden dining room table, 90 centimeters long, by 150 centimeters wide, by 75 centimeters tall. Testing indicates that it is approximately 70 years old, and has shown no unusual preservative properties. SCP-1117-1 is laden with a wide variety of food and drink, designated SCP-1117-2. When consumed by subjects, it is rapidly replaced, though the exact contents of the table are not consistent. Analysis has been unable to find a pattern. Dishes and products from cultures all over the world have been observed. Subjects display great enjoyment during the meal. Testing has revealed that it is possible to remove dishes from the table and serve them elsewhere with the same results. Subjects unaware of the food's origin still describe it as very tasty. Any who have consumed food or drink from SCP-1117-1 become subject to a secondary effect. These individuals, designated SCP-1117-3, have the ability to cause SCP-1117-2 to spontaneously appear nearby whenever they feel hungry. Subjects display great reluctance to consume anything other than the food that they find, remarking that nothing else tastes as good. The effect can be spread if SCP-1117-3 share SCP-1117-2 with other individuals. Aside from these effects, the found food is indistinguishable from normal food. The side effects of SCP-1117 exposure only appear after roughly a week. Individuals with active lifestyles are affected notably faster, demonstrating the effects after only a few days. Subjects have described a steady decrease in energy levels and become easily fatigued. Continued consumption of SCP-1117-2 increases the effects. Between three and six weeks after initial exposure, subjects apparently die from a lack of energy, or from theoretically harmless contagions. No unusual physiological effects have been noted, and autopsies have proved largely inconclusive, with no signs of damage consistent with previously studied energy draining phenomena. Forcing SCP-1117-3 to ingest food other than SCP-1117-2 after the effects have begun to show has induced extreme nausea and fatal cardiac arrhythmia in all cases. Autopsies have shown severe depletion of phosphates, magnesium, and calcium to be a significant contributing factor, although the cause of these deficiencies is unclear. Given the SCP's ability to spread rapidly, SCP-1117-1 has been declared off-limits. Field agents are advised to be alert to any signs of SCP-1117 exposure in the general population. Addendum. Lock it up. Research is going nowhere and this thing is clearly of no use to us. Just keep watching out for signs of infection in the general population. There could be a major epidemic if it gets out. This whole project has been thoroughly depressing. We get enough routine deaths around here without testing inexplicable ones. At least the bodies take up less room. Dr. Blank.